Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome on back to the Beyond the Summit coverage of the Southeast Asian series. Should be an absolutely wonderful game. We did end up having a pretty interesting one in the last series. Signature Trust up against Team Peng Lima in a, what can probably be described as maybe a bit of a throw, maybe a bit of a drafting mistake, maybe a bit of whole lot of malarkey going on. I'm Lyrical Dota, joined today by Danny Lee Cass, as well as Corrupt Drop Bear on the stats. Danny, what was your impression of that last series? Series. Was it more throw? Was it more draft? Where were you sitting on the fence? It, honestly, I'm on the fence about it. It was, it was uh, things happened on both sides. So we had Trust, who had that massive advantage. Pang Nima, who was on the back foot by quite a bit. It was all on one team fine. I think it was mistakes made by Signature to Trust, not with just item decisions, but also maybe a couple of decision made, um, decisions that they made that also really hurt them in the game. Whereas for, for Pang Nima, they also made some really good decisions. So for Pang Nima, I would say props to them for also hanging in there and really just keeping in there, waiting for that moment to, the, to win that team fight up against Trust. So I think both teams, you could say both, both things for them. Yeah, I think that, yeah, there was, there was definitely a lot of problems at various stages in the draft, and trying to address those now a little bit, they do end up banning out the Alchemist, not going to be seeing his lovely face this time around, and I think that that's a decent answer. I mean, obviously, the Alchemist was a big pro part of their problem last time, but I think that it was also, as we've touched on, maybe some in-game decision-making. Taking that out of the play entirely, just we're going to get rid of him, this does leave open the option now for the Dazzle and the Doom to be taken, so a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle. We'll see how they end up dealing with it. Slardar is already a fairly decent way to make it happen because you get the minus armor and that's something that is sort of open to being vulnerable uh, in the early stages by the fact that Doom doesn't have much armor there at the beginning. We're also not going to be seeing the Undyne or the Winter Wyvern and the Shadow Fiend this time around. And we touched on also in the last game a whole heck of a lot. I felt like I was harping on it consistently that uh, the Winter Wyvern wasn't really finding the levels, but then once you ended up having a couple of those big teams Team fights, Winter Wyvern was able to have just an incredible presence, um, being an a integral part of that comeback. Yeah, I agree with that as well, and I'm pretty sure Pang Lima, knowing that Slardar is, was available and is on the side of a Signature Trust, they probably would be wishing that they had the Winter Wyvern on their side now, because you know if there's a Slardar, there's going to be a lot of physical damage output. So I think for them, they can settle with the Dazzle, it's fine. They can also sort of counterbalance some of the minus armor because they're going to have access to the Weave, but... I hardly see Doom anymore because this hero is consistently banned out. What is the current state of Doom? Is he still supposed to be that broken hero with, with, the, uh, with the horrible ultimate or is he just sort of in a good spot right now where he's, he's strong but he's also got major weaknesses? I think that, yes, definitely the second one that you ended up saying there. And really what it comes down to is prioritizing when you use that Scorched Earth, because it's still an incredibly strong ability in what it's able to do. It's just now, it's not as spammable as it was before. And of course the item build now is a little bit more fluctuating also, because you don't get that bonus damage that you did before out from your Aghanim Scepter upgraded ultimate. And I think that that really just, it makes a lot of sense to me now. And you can still run him in that offlane role. Some of the other ways that you occasionally see it run, and I'm wondering if we're gonna see it this time, is actually Tranquil Boots, and then you just jungle with the Doom and roam on into the mid lane and just continually go on in there. And it's so frustrating to go against because you actually are relatively tanky since you get those Tranquil Boots. Maybe you end up picking up a Bassy or something else like that. And all of a sudden you can just get in the middle of everybody and you've all got all that regeneration. It's so frustrating to deal with as a mid player. We are also going to be seeing the Gyrocopter picked up as well as the Meepo, Ancient Apparition, Juggernaut, and the Lich Band. And Pang Lima, they don't have the Ghetto Naga Siren, so instead they just go back for the classic. So, we're going to be in for a long game. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh god, I should have made some tea. Anyways, so there's a Naga Siren in the pool now. Now, typically when there's a Naga Siren, you have the option of actually having the Song of the Siren as a setup. Is there any chance that Pang Lima goes for any major ultimate heroes now? 
Um, you could see that, certainly. Uh, you know, one of the more classic ones back in the day was seeing the Tidehunter thrown on out there. I don't expect to see him. Um, there is still the option, if they wanted to run it, of the Naga Siren support. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is, again, because of that minus armor strat that you're going to be able to do. You end up seeing here Riptide, as it's leveled on up, you end up getting it up to minus five armor, which is very significant in the laning stage and is sometimes seen as part of those aggro trilanes, which you can run with the Dazzle because you've got enough sustain to make that happen. So to me, that feels like a possibility. We are also going to be seeing the Io picked up somewhat naked here, not seeing his buddy Mr. Tiny, although you can still run it with the Gyrocopter. It can be pretty effective. A lot of teams actually like running Tiny Wisp on top of a Slaughter pick. Mm. So if they really want to, they can go for the Slaughter, uh, the Tiny Wisp, unless they want to go for something different and possibly go for a Slaughter Wisp. A what now? Sorry? A Slaughter Wisp. There's an option of doing that as well, but instead it's still going to be the Tiny Wisp plus the Slaughter. Pang Lemur, in the meantime, they pick up a Spirit Breaker, so it does look like it's going to be that carry Nagasar in this game. Yeah, that's, uh... We're going to be in for a long one, as you said, <laughs> of course. You. <laughs> now, the plus side of this is that you do have the possibility of doing IO Tiny relocates uh, to be able to sort of rat on out in your own right. Now, the fact that they didn't end up picking up another hero here to be able to um, effectively jump on in and, and disrupt the relocate ganks means that you're also a little bit vulnerable there. Sometimes you end up seeing a Winter Wyvern picked on up as a support that's going to be able to just turn uh, Io and Tiny against each other and the romance is broken, uh, which is kind of a nice little way to make that happen, but we're not seeing that hero picked up. We're also not seeing a Disruptor at this point. Uh, instead, going for the Spirit Breaker. Do you have any feelings as to why they ended up doing that? Is it just to be able to give you a little bit more of a global ganking presence or maybe ensure the, the early game? What are your thoughts on the Spirit Breaker pick? Yeah, on, honestly, every time you see a Spirit Breaker pick, you have to know that it's mostly going to be aggression. Uh, Spirit Breaker, though, he he's good as well because he gives you vision. And I think when it comes to chasing, you look at Pang Lima's draft. They didn't have the best chase. And Spirit Breaker is probably one of the best heroes when it comes to a chasing game. Uh, so it helps them when it comes to chasing heroes down. You still have the bash chances, which can be crucial, especially in those one-on-one -on -one engagements, which could be, it could determine whether you win a team fight or not. So I think Spirit Break, he's just that tanky frontliner that Pang Lima sort of needs. So that they're, well, they don't actually have a backline. I was going to say if they had a backline to capitalize on these tanks, then it's fine. So Doom and Spirit Breaker, I guess they're both just very good at really disrupting heroes. They're just going to get in your face and hopefully keep you busy for someone else. What with this last hero pick, though? It has to be something that can sort of hold the game for the Naga Siren. And I think to some extent, you probably want it to be scaling damage as well. Maybe a Wind Ranger? That's a possibility. Um, I wouldn't mind that. I also wouldn't mind necessarily the TA. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's against an IO tiny combo. Maybe, honestly, the Lena. That, that's another possibility. If they ended up running the Lena, then you've got a couple different ways to be able to sort of take one hero out of the fight at the early stages. They're going to go for a Dark Seer, so this is going to be a mid Naga Siren. All what right. Carry Doom. Mm. Huh. Um, okay. <laughs> that's what I've got to say about it. All right. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Uh, it is still going to be that core Naga Siren. Um, which is very, very unique, and I, I don't know if I love it, uh, if we're going to be completely frank. I, I think that this leaves you open, at least at this point. You've got to have something in mind here. You've got to have another thing that you're thinking about in the back of your mind, some strat that you're running, and maybe it's something that we're not even seeing. Maybe it's going to end up being the Dazzle mid, and it's carry with a support Naga Siren. Um, that's not what this is, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's got to be something unique here, because there's no other reason you'd pick that Naga Siren for the mid. Okay, so let's take a look at what their draft has so far. Let's look at the synergy that's available, right? So we're all questioning on why they picked a Spirit Breaker as their last pickup. You look at Darkseer now, and this, this hero actually synergizes very well with the Spirit Breaker. You've got a hero to put Ion Shells on. I've seen games where Naga Siren rooms with Ion Shells, and because she's got the net, she's got a good way of locking down the target and just sitting right on top of them. And even Doom is a really good Ion Shell target. So this Darkseer has massive synergy with the rest of their team. It's three melee heroes, though. So uh, clumping up is going to be inevitable. So I think Gyrocop is going to have a heyday mm. when it comes to throwing out the AoE damage. Last week up for Trust is going to be a lion. Bit of a clunky support, quite demanding with levels, but I think this game, if he can get those initial levels, I think it's going to be a very good lion game. 
Yeah, definitely. The other thing about it is that it ends up giving you that possibility to instantly get rid of those illusions. So I think that to me, that's that's really what they're looking for here. If you think about late game scaling, uh, and Io obviously can't deal with Naga Siren illusions. Tiny can to some extent with burst damage, but he doesn't want to have to sit in that radiance and I, I, I like this pick right here. It makes a lot of sense. And in lane, also being able to drain the mana from... He's probably not going to get it too early. It's going to be more important for him to get the disables against the uh, Spirit Breaker and the, the Dark Seer, which is that very aggressive lineup. So taking a look at it, it's going to be a very interesting game. It's not something that I was expecting. Hopefully not a resident sleeper for all you fine folks out there <laughs> in the Twitch chat. But we're going to do a quick little introduction for all of the players. Lakel is going to be on that Gyrocopter, as you mentioned. Fiend Mile is going to be playing on the Lion. We do have Jab, who's going to be on the Io this time. His buddy, my pro, is going to be playing on the uh, Tiny. And last but not least, Abba, singing the Dancing Queen on that Slardar. Okay, I'm Santa Pang Nima on the Radiant Squad for today. We have uh, Sakri playing on our Dazzle. That's just watching over the rune spot for the moment. We've got LOL on our Naga Siren, followed up by Bun handling our Spirit Breaker again. So he played it last game. I'm going to play it again, it seems. Sugar, uh, Sugar Bear this time on the Doom. Wasn't expecting a safe lane Doom. We'll see if this works out for Signature to Trust. And last hero is going to be Rage to Dream for Darkseer. I think the only other team I've ever seen play a, a carry or safe lane Doom has been any team with with uh, Eternal Envy. I don't think I've seen mm. any other team run the Doom like this. I've seen it a couple of times. It is always an option, and you end up being... I, I think you can still keep the same item build. It just relies more upon you wanting to prioritize the farm. If you're a little bit worried about, you know, your mid laner not being able to get the most out of it. But regardless, we're going to see some runes traded off here. Uh, Lol on this Naga Siren is going to be able to pick on up the mid one. And now you're going to end up seeing the Io pick up the top rune is actually a little bit of problems. Dazzle ends up pausing the game. Um, a little bit of lag is everybody. I actually got a little bit also. Uh, yeah. The server is having some problems. But all right, we'll see how this goes. Very excited for this game to get started in just a second or two here. Um, what do you think about the lanes of the Naga against the Io Tiny? Naga, she has a decent amount of armor to work with. She's not really the best here when it comes to bursting down and right clicks, but what? Um, why is... We're actually seeing the Spirit Breaker alone, and it's a jungle doom. Oh, no, he's just going to get here for the creep. Sorry about that. Sorry to interrupt you. My bad. I'm dumb. No, 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 no. No, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, they can do this if they want to. Just sort of put Sugar Bear in the jungle uh, eventually. I don't think for the initial levels, but Naga Siren typically isn't a very squishy hero. So you sometimes see her in the mid lane, and she's not easy to harass out. And I think once you get that bottle on the Naga Siren, it's going to be quite difficult for Tiny Whist to, to really push her out of lane. I think the only time they'll ever have a chance at killing her, though, is if they can get close enough for an Avatos combo, or at least toss her back towards the tower for the extra pot shot. Mm. So Naga Siren, naturally tanky, she can still be taken down uh, off the back of some really um, good coordination. Yeah, definitely. And now I'm actually seeing a little bit more of the synergy here, potentially, out of this draft. You end up getting the first wave of experience going to the Spirit Breaker. Doom goes on into the mid lane, or into the jungle, just to be able to get that swiftness aura, as well as the clap coming out. And um, that's going to allow at least pretty early rotations from the Spirit Breaker. He's probably going to go on into the jungle now, pull the creep wave, do the pull through, and then he's going to start roaming around and hopefully being able to apply a little bit more pressure to this mid lane. That's what I'm expecting, at least. There is always the option that he goes up top also when the Dark Seer ends up getting level three uh, and that two points in Ion Shell. So it seems to me, at least, like they've got pretty solid rotations all across the board as my probe takes a little bit of damage here, taking a lot of the uh, his mana expended here. Hopefully Jab's going to be able to heal him back up in a second or two. So did you see what happened in the mid lane with the toss back? No, I did not. No? Okay, so what happened was they tossed back the Naga Siren towards the tower. He went for an instant mirror image to to disconnect the tower pod shots. So it, he effectively mitigated a lot of the incoming damage and just got out pretty nicely. Oh. And, they, and also, Trust was confused on which one's the real Naga. So yeah. really good plays coming out from LOL on, a, on our Naga Siren here. Although yeah. this might be it. Yeah, and mirror image not up for another second here is going to be able to toss it on out. There's the heal bomb turning back around. My bro dropping very low. This is an interesting answer right here to the problem of the tiny IO in the mid lane. And now going to contest for the runes. We do have the spirit starting to drop on out. There's going to be the charge forward though. Slaughter not going to be able to be here in time. We do end up seeing IO get the invis rune now. And no regeneration. Lol is going to drop first blood going the direction of the Slaughter. And now chasing forward after Bun Sugar Bear is here though. And he's going to start doing a decent amount of 
of damage, charging on through, hitting three heroes. We have a heal bomb that's possible to come on out. We do end up seeing the Tiny get a kill on the Spirit Breaker, and now Abba just going to sprint away from this one. Salving on up, it actually gets broken by the range creep. Oh, how unfortunate is that? And now tossing Sugar Bear into tower range. He's taking a lot of damage. We have the crush. That's going to be enough for the kill. Three heroes dead on the side of Signature, on the side of Ping 5, excuse me, and looking for a little bit more. Oh, didn't quite, unfortunately, hitting the toss, but instead is going to throw out the avalanche. And four heroes dead at the very early stages of this game. A thousand gold swing into their favor. Me, oh my, what an unfortunate situation for them. They do get a kill on the top lane on the lion, though, as we did see Bun rotate. So all over the map, things are just going crazy. I love the toss plays coming out from my pro so far. I've been doing some really beautiful tosses. Tossing the Wisp right onto the Naga Siren before she got the rune. Tossing the Doom in towards the tower range to drop him low. I'm, I'm really impressed with my pro's tiny and I can't wait to see more of these tosses. I think at some point he will eventually go for tossing the Slaughter onto the target to get a crush on. So mm. with my pro, if he plays as tiny like this, the options are unlimited for what he can really do this game yeah definitely I, I think that that's it's one of the more dynamic sides of this hero and gives him a lot more utility uh, than just a normal uh, mid hero as it's oh my god he dropped so low the spirits are actually going to kill off the Naga Siren nice shallow grave last second can they save this last spirit no Dazzle ends up getting hit by it one more right click is going to be enough they finish him off Io gets that kill but might end up paying for it oh no is it going to be enough they do end up getting that kill and now maybe going to be able to take out the Dazzle no he is going to go down in the end as everybody dies in the mid lane and Darkseer ends up getting a kill up in the top lane. Gyrocopter going down. What is happening here, Danny? This is absolute insanity. It looks like they're also going to be able to maybe kill off the lion. He's going to go deep for it. This is a big dive and is going to be able to maybe get taken on out the crush on the other side. We have 14 <laughs> kills at roughly four minutes. What is this game? Uh, this is a game that everyone wishes Dota was like. Just consistent action. I love it so far though. It means that we've got lots of stuff to really do. But God, these team fights, not even team fights, it's more like skirmishes happening so early on. It's just both teams trying to assert dominance on the map. They're trying to shut down heroes. They're trying to win lanes. And it's like, if one lane goes well for one team, the other one seems to be a bit of a disaster. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it seems like both teams are still pretty even in terms of what they have. You look at the EXP graph, it is even. It used to be in the in favor of Pang Lima, then Signet of Trust, and then all, all of a sudden back to middle. Gold is still in favor of Trusso, so that's good news. Although they're going to jump straight onto what seems the Naga toss back. Although she's a little bit tanky this time. Here comes Female, though. He wants to try and get a stun, but Naga Siren Sword that's coming. Doom are coming out from Sugar Bear. Wants to chase down this poor lion who's dropping very quickly. And Myprim wants to try and save him. Tosses him onto the creeps to sort of delay this. They cannot get the deny off. They get the lion kill. And look at these heroes. We've got three versus three in the dire jungle here. They've got one that goes down first. Give me the Naga Siren. They're going to keep on chasing my pro solo. Toss gets two kills. Tiny gets a triple kill onto Spirit Breaker plus the Doom. And Trust lose only a lion. Oh man, that was a bit too deep there. And uh, looking at a 1500 gold swing, right around a thousand experience, the itemization here for the Doom, he ended up going for the phase boots and then afterwards going for the Ring of Bassi. So his armor was not quite as high as it would have been if you normally see this type of rotation in the early stages by picking up those tranquils. Um, obviously he gets the faster movement speed and hits a little bit harder and they did end up killing the Doom, but or killing the Lion, but sh definitely not enough there to be able to warrant get, losing four heroes and giving a triple kill to that tiny at the early stages. Sorry we didn't end up switching over to the net worth. I think that that's definitely going to be more relevant at this stage. Although at six minutes, you don't expect to be seeing that. I mean, there's been 19 kills so far this game, and it looks like Tiny's going to end up going for a Shadow Blade as opposed to going for that Blink Dagger, which is kind of an interesting item choice given the scrappy nature of the fight, the extra damage, attack speed, and also being able to have that invisibility is going to be pretty relevant, though. Um, another couple of things that we ended up seeing is there's been so much action. Io ended up uh, tethering to the illusion of himself to get the bonus movement speed to make sure that the camps were stacked up over in the jungle. Just so many weird plays in this game, and I, I mean, this is not what I was expecting out of a Naga Siren <laughs> game. Normally, you just end up seeing farm, 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 and definitely seeing something different here. Yeah, absolutely. So it seems that the game's going to slow down a little bit here, which I'm going to be a little sad about. The Shadow Blade pickup on the Tiny, though, I, found, I find this quite interesting because 
You compare Shadow Blade to a Blink Dagger, and Blink Dagger almost wins in every regard, aside from just having that extra bonus that Shadow Blade gives you, which is extra attack speed, and also just having that little bit of burst as well when you go for that first right click. Is it supposed to be a solo roaming tiny? Oh, Kells, vacuum. Not quite enough to burst him down. I think that's going to be him alive. TP's in. Slardar's going to come in. Going to be hexed up too. Is this going to be enough time for the Slardar to come in? Going to sprint in. Haste is going to be there, at least the Surge. But look at all the heroes converging in. And my Pro and Abba, they want a little bit of this action. They have 100% vision. Crush should be there. I think this is going to be the end of this Darkseer's reign. Got a little oh. too greedy and doesn't even get that kill. But, uh... Yeah, I think the only reason you'd ever pick up the Shadow Blade on the Tiny is if you want that extra burst damage when you try and go for a solo kill. Yeah, that seems to definitely be the reason. And, you know, you're going to be able to find it that much more efficiently. Of course, if you do end up seeing Naga Siren Illusions there, maybe you end up having a little bit of trouble identifying which one is which. But uh, it seemed to be working so far. I liked the idea of Pang Fai's Draft being able to sort of have a counter initiation when they toss you back towards the tower. You're going to be able to you know, throw the heal bomb on top of that many more targets uh, and it gives you extra damage. But the big problem has just been that they haven't been able to, the, the rotations out of Signature Trust, they've been covering their mid players, they've been cover. it's just sort of been a constantly running at you Dota. And I think that Pang 5 are now realizing, you know what, we can't win these engagements at this point. There's not enough damage on our side. Um, and when you have a Slaughter being able to toss in out those crushes, when you've got the t Avalanche Toss combo from the Tiny and all of the regeneration that the uh, IO gives you, it's just, it's too much to handle. Mm, I think so as well. So we'll just have to take a look and see if they're going to be able to sort of deal with that. Because I think it's inevitable at this point. It's just something that you have to deal with. So game slowed down a little bit. Both teams, I think they're going to resort to farming. The state of this Naga Siren, she's sitting on 1k gold 10 minutes in. And considering all the action, what do you, fe what do you feel about this Naga Siren? Is... Is Lol hanging in there? Is he doing a little bit better than you expected? I, I honestly look at him now and I think he's doing relatively well considering the game. I think so too. It's just that the pace of it is not going to be able to be slow enough to get the farm that you need on this hero. Um, you're maxing on out going just for that that maximum uh, farming build, multiple points in Mirror Image as well as multiple points in the Riptide. You don't have any points in net at this point at level 8, not even taking a point in the ultimate. So trying to do everything that you can to, to catch on up. And Bounty Runes are going to help with this, but you're going to end up getting ganked forward. Jump forward, that's the, the blink reveal on the Slardar. The relocate on in, it's going to be an easy kill. And now that you have that blink dagger up on the uh, Slardar at under 10 minutes, I think you ended up getting at like 9.30 or something, um, you're just, it's so hard to catch back up at this point and really be able to be relevant. You talked about in the early stages, the Naga Siren who sometimes runs around with the Iron Shell on top of her, but you don't have that capabilities because you don't have the point in net, so you're not going to be able to sort of do it. And it just sort of shows the pace of this game. You need to have the rest of the side of Pang 5 cover you on this Naga Siren. And probably moving her over to the bot lane would be the best option, but they've sort of committed the doom here with the uh, trying to pick on up those drums, and maybe they're going to try and get a little bit more farm on him. Sugar Bear is going to go down though avalanche toss combo everything coming in and he goes down immediately Ugh. Pang Lima just losing so many heroes and I, I absolutely agree with you of what you said earlier the game's just not going slow enough for Pang Lima to sort of get their footing in this game and to sort of have it moving their way because as, an, as you said Naga Siren game it's supposed to be a slow paced game you want the game to sort of go slow have that Naga Siren farm the entire map to sort of buy time for the rest of the team but it's not happening because what's, what Signature Trust is doing is they're asserting map dominance and they're also trying to influence the momentum of the game and they're sort of forcing it too quickly for the Naga Siren to feel comfortable. Still farming away, but I think after a while, Trust is eventually just going to start steamrolling over some of these really squishy ears. Like poor Sakura just got spotted, Avatost, and the Dazzle just gets deleted for the game for the next 20 seconds. Yeah. The plus side of this, of course, is that you don't have heroes that are the best at pushing down towers at this point. And while obviously Gyrocopter is going to be a huge teamfight component, they haven't taken any tier 1 towers as of yet. They're going to try and jump on top of them here in a second or two, but we have the wraparound going on with the Tiny as well as the IO behind them. They're going to dive on in here. We also have a TP coming in. Doom has been committed. He's going to go down, but did get off the call down. Now Bunny a little bit separated from the crowd. Saloon Crush coming out. A couple more right clicks might be enough to be able to burst him down. There's going to be the vacuum. A lot of damage coming out from these 
these ion shells. The wall has been committed at this point. Nice Hadouken to be able to finish on off that Slardar there. Now looking like they might be able to come out of this one a little bit ahead. The other thing is that Naga Siren is starting to do a lot of damage to that mid tower. Finger of Death comes out and certainly what ends up looking really good for them is turning back around. Everybody goes down on the side of Pang Fine, stuck around slightly too long and the Tiny and the Lion are going to be the victors. A thousand gold swing each ways as well as relatively even experience. I think they're okay with that because you also were able to take on down the mid-tier tower and buy a little bit more room for this Naga Siren who actually ended up going for drums. Huh. I thought the Naga Siren would have made a beeline for the for the Radiance. But it seems oh. like Naga Siren, she's... I don't know if I agree with this. I feel like the game's going so quickly. She needs the Radiance as soon as possible. Their stats are nice. Bun looks like he's going to be taken down by my pro. No, looks like he's just going to be harassed. And they were going to go for the toss back, but... You know, it's creep. It's not the hero. Doom um, has drums also. Oh, okay. Then that changes everything completely. You don't need... I, I guess the Naga Siren is, should never be seen with the Doom. Yeah. I I don't know. It it feels so weird to me. Like, all right, we're going to... miscommunication, possibly? It's That's the only thing that I can really think of because, like... Now you've got this Doom going for a bunch of Aura Strats. Oh. They're going to end up running right on into him. This is going to be a kill on the Darkseer who's trying oh, to... No. He does have the mechanism, but, I mean, you just can't do it. It's... I really disagree with Naga Siren going for Radiance. <laughs> That's all I can say here. Sugar Bear is going to run away. Scorched Earth coming down. Um, I don't know about this. And even in 30... In 35 games this patch, Naga Siren has never bought drums first. So even the stats say this is different. Maybe it's just a Pang Lima thing where they're, where they're kind of used to buying drums on the Naga. I don't know what drums provides Naga though, because you'd never want to have Naga Siren in the fight aside from stats. And maybe it's just so that she doesn't have to buy a Yasha for movement speed. I, I honestly don't know. Well, we're just going to continue on assuming that this is something that they are identifying. It's a, a build that they wanted to go, and they're going to be going for it now. ABBA is a little bit behind enemy lines. They're going to end up being able to spot him on out here. Oh, blink away, keeping him alive, at least for the time being, and not going to be able to find him there. They do end up initiating the Song of the Siren for this one. Lion is caught out. Unfortunately, Slardar was not caught in it. The rest of the side of Signature Trust here is here. Though. They're going to be able to get a nice little stun off onto several heroes, and it looks like they're just going to be able to walk away from this one. What a weird little engagement. We do have a fight up on the top side bun getting chased on out by the gyrocopter called uncommitted it's gonna be able to hit on to three i do believe bun drops pretty low but the shallow grave keeping him alive there's gonna be the charge port on to abba at this point only the gyrocopter has gone down as i do say that though the doom ends up getting taken out on the back lines so tiny io doom committed on top of them they're gonna be able to just sustain throughout this one and no real way to be able to find a kill they end up trading it out two for one the only reason Pang Lima actually won that team fight was because Signature Trust was split as a team. You had, uh, you had the tiny, the Wisp plus the Lion relocate here. So Tiny didn't have his partner. Tiny had to sort of go in by himself. Then you had Slaughter and Gyrocopter sort of trying to do everything by themselves, trying to fight up against Pang Lima. And you know what's going to happen if you're going to be two versus five. So those two get decimated. And in the backside, Tiny plus Wisp was trying to finish off the the Doom, which they eventually got, but. You lose two major heroes, and I guess you get the Doom, which is fine, but it's not the Naga Siren, and I think it's just a major win for Pang Nima because of that small mistake from Trust. I think Trust could have backed up a little bit and maybe fought as an entire team, knowing that the Naga song was down. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. I, it just didn't end up working out for them, and the thing that I wanted to talk on and touch on right here is I, I was thinking more about this drums on the Nagasar just because <laughs> that's sort of what I'm doing right now. Um, and sometimes you ended up seeing Naga Sirens go for like the drums defusal blade with the Aquila going and then you get into a bit more of a fighty build and being able to take away the mana from these sides makes a lot of sense to me. It looks like we're going to maybe see another initiation here in a second though so I'm going to stop talking about it. We don't have a song. There's going to be the jump forward. Slardar Crush connects onto two. Rage to the Dream in a little bit of trouble. They're going to charge forward onto the Slardar on the backside now. A Doom committed onto the Tiny. He's taking a lot of damage. The call down is only going to connect onto the Dazzle and a lot of damage being dealt very swiftly here. The relocation Kate away though is going to be fine and it looks like they're going to be able to get a kill on the dazzle in the end also oh lakel's in a little bit of trouble do they have the connect and the catch for him they are going to be able to take him out aegis now down io is going to be coming back into the fight in just a second or two are they going to have enough to burst him down looks like instead they're going to commit onto the gyrocopter he's going to be taking a good amount of damage but tiny is back in the midst of everything he's getting hit
bit up a little bit. Bun dropping low. They kill off the IO. Meanwhile, Bun falls. Another couple of quick kills. Rage the Dream doesn't have the mana for a vacuum as of yet. He's going to be able to have it in a second, but instead is just going to be able to get the Ion Shell down to kill off the Gyrocopter. Illusions abound on both sides. It looks like my pro is going to be able to get out of this one. They have the Sardar chasing vacuum back to be able to disrupt the crush. Meanwhile, the Avalanche toss combo is going to be committed, but it wasn't actually the Avalanche that caught on to him. Nice there to catch with the Centaur Stomp, but it looks like my pro might be able to take on out this Naga Siren here. We do have the Dazzle. Oh, there's going to be the Shallow Grave in time. They know they're not going to be able to keep him alive. Unfortunately, Dazzle not quite quick enough on the fingers, and that is going to be a godlike streak going to the Doom off the back of the Tiny going down. And fight recap, a huge win for Pang 5. Very, very interesting. It was. Tiny, do you think it was worth the Tiny to go back for that Naga Siren? I feel like it was just way too risky, and you gave away such a big streak. It wasn't to the Naga Siren, but it was to a Doom, a hero that's going to be able to capitalize on that huge amount of gold. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think that it was super solid. and So, all right. I want to go back to the point I was making about the Naga <laughs> Siren. Okay. The drums there, you you think about the way that that build goes. It's to be able to fight and uh, get a little bit more damage early. You're stacking up auras on your Doom. A little bit of a miscommunication there, maybe. Um, and I also don't know if that's necessarily the best build that they want to go for. Given that they have the... the um, the Dark Seer there who's going to have the mechanism, they can fight early. It just seems a little bit strange to me. But yeah, I, I, I like now for the side of Peng 5, the fact that you're getting more of these auras up. They're going to be able to fight more quickly. Uh, but I just, I'm worried about their ability to really scale well into the later stages. And it seems to me that Signature Trust has a great ability to hold high ground. They haven't taken any more towers. And now, considering that we've gone for more of an early battle build on the side of Pang 5, are they really going to be able to burst that high ground and take the game to the, uh, take the game before these heroes get really huge? I'm not sure. I think the only good thing about high ground for Pang 5 is they can just throw Naga illusions up there. They can sort of push for free which is something that Signature Trust can't really do unless they pick up a Manta style on the Tiny. He will get it, get it down the line, but Tiny's got so many other items that he wants to prioritize before he even thinks about a, a Manta style. So high ground is still not favorable for either side up until the Tiny starts getting really big. Then pushing for Trust is actually quite easy compared to Pang, uh, for Pang Nima because they want a game where it's slower, there's not so much action. They, you know, It's just the momentum of a game that you want as a Naga Siren. You just take it easy and that's it. For Trust, I think they're just playing way too quickly for Pang Lima and I think it might be their downfall. Uh, Diffusal on the Naga side, I think the only thing I don't like about this is Naga isn't that tanky enough to sort of want to fight unless she comes in maybe after most of the fight has happened and and sort of bursts down those low HP heroes that if she wants to do that, that's fine. But right now, only 1.2k HP, and she's got a decent amount of armor, but her HP pool is still pretty low. And there's so much burst damage in terms of magical damage on Trust. It's not mostly physical, it's mostly magical. So that armor is almost redundant, unless you think about the Tiny or the Slaughter uh, really working on the Naga. I think the only good thing about, uh, about the armor as well is that she isn't impacted as much by the Amplify damage as some other heroes are. Yeah, it's true. Um, I, I think that maybe, honestly, we're seeing the courier go on over to the secret shop right now by the Naga Siren, and I'm wondering if, worried about this sort of late game scalability, if this is actually going to be into a Radiance, um, as a, a bit of a secondary item. I, I'm not exactly sure what it, she's going to be going for here, but it does have 2,800 gold in the bank. It's not enough to be able to buy a Radiance, so I'm wondering if maybe you're even going to be going back for something else like an Ultimate Orb into a Scotty or something weird. I, I just, I, I, I'm not sure what this item is going to be, and um, it feels to me that if you were going to end up going for that Diffusal Blade, you would just end up picking that up and then bringing it out to yourself. It's It's been a very strange game out of paying five so far, but it's ended up paying off in the last couple of minutes. They won those last couple of engagements. Tiny is going to be going for an Aghanim Scepter now, so his scalability into the late game is going to be very strong. And I just... I'm, I'm not sure uh, about paying five in their, their draft here and what exactly they're going to be going for. If it ends up working out for them, cool, um, but... Time will tell indeed. In terms of net worth right now, it's relatively even. Experience still in the favor of Signature Trust. 
I don't think that they can really hold off on another big fight. It felt to me like that fight went really well for Pang 5 uh, in terms of the initiation. They were able to sort of keep them off. I guess the other thing, though, is that they didn't end up committing the Song of the Siren for that last engagement. So it's strange. It's a strange mm. one. <laughs> Well, I think Song of the Siren will change the whole dynamic of the fight because it's just an advantage to Pang Lima if they can get that initiation that they want. But if, if Trust can also counter-initiate after the song, then that's also a pretty scary fact that is taken into consideration as well. But we'll see how it goes if Trust sort of want to keep on going at this really fast-paced order, if they want to slow it down a little bit and finish up their own set of items. Net worth-wise, it's... Pang Lima is actually looking pretty good. They've got three here that are roughly at around the same net worth. Obviously, you want Naga to be higher, but considering how the game has gone, for her to be at AK now, it's still very good for that Naga Siren. And then you look at the progression of the Gyrocopter as well as the Slaughter for, for Trust. Because they sort of grouped up a little bit more than Pang Lima, these heroes haven't been able to get uh, the, same amounts of farm of, uh, the same amounts of farm as these heroes. So Lakel's on the Gyro. He's gone for a bit of mixed build here. Is this supposed to be a Sand and Yasha's kind of band of elven skin than Ogre Club? Yeah, it's all good. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> He's kind of, it's definitely interesting. Uh, we are going to see also on the Doom the sort of Sanjin Yasha build also. It looks like they're going to be able to find them on out here, though. Song of the Siren has been committed. They're also going to be able to get the weave down and relocate in. It looks like they're going to be able to bring everybody over here. I'm not sure if they want to initiate their way and they get the mechanism vacuum wall. Oh, my goodness. The damage is coming out is ridiculous there. I think that was largely off the back of the Darkseer and the Dazzle, and everybody oh, gets completely nice. decimated. Darkseer mega kill spreak. Um, all of the particles on the screen were just <laughs> destroying my frame rate. But a 3,000 gold swing in the case of just about a few seconds, almost 4,000 there. And this is actually going to be able to get your Naga Siren close to the radiance. And Naga was actually in the middle of everything. She ran right into all the heroes. She absorbed all the damage and she didn't even die. The healing output for Pang Lima was enough to keep her alive. And then you get all those heroes. It means everyone on Pang Lima got EXP and gold out of those kills, which is huge. These are heroes that are going to be able to use these levels and gold quite nicely. And for Trust, you have a massive disaster like that. And you, let's take, we have to think about the way that Signature of Trust are probably feeling about this game right now. They were probably feeling super confident before having that really farm tiny with the Shadow Blade and thinking that everything was fine and dandy. You have a team fight like that, what are you probably thinking right now? You're probably thinking you're super far behind and that maybe my pro isn't going to be enough for uh, for the team to sort of hold on. Yeah, it. I mean, like, we've talked a little bit about the early battle build out of them and I think it was just a little bit of underestimating how tanky this Naga Siren is. You don't expect to be seeing that drums first. You don't expect this hero to be able to sort of, you know, constantly survive throughout that. And the first initial burst didn't end up taking her down and over committing and now needing to readjust and re-identify how good they're going to be able to be scaling later and really being able to fight right now. Like, the other part of this is just... I. I think that if you do end up seeing this build again, you end up going for the Agnum Scepter up on Tiny, you're still a little bit more tanky, but it's much more farm oriented. The fact that they ended up just continuing to fight into that, it seemed more and more like Signature Trust are committing to fights that they shouldn't. And they're going to end up paying for it now again, as we do have a charge on into the middle of them. There's no hesitation at all on this. Well, as I say that, they hesitate and back on out on Bun, but still looking for their moment. Naga Siren Radiance burn on to everybody. The net is going to be committed now. Io, they can't fight this, though. They have to back on out and finally throw, shown a little bit of restraint. You would have thought that Signature Trust would have been able to deal with this early aggression. It's just not the case. Sanj and Yasha up on the Doom. What a weird game. Well, it's an, it's an item that you use if you want to go for 100% early game commitment. And he's got zero drum charges 23 minutes into the game. So they've definitely used the drum charges this game. Um, so this is Pang Nima saying, we are buying our cheap cost efficient items now on Doom because we want to finish the game now. They know they have this huge advantage and they're able to play aggressively just because they have the sufficient amounts of farm now. They can't kill the slaughter, unfortunately. But they could do so much because they've been able to get those levels, to get those items, they're tankier, and they have the tools necessary to fight trust now. They're not at a disadvantage anymore. They are either equal, or if we look at net worth, far ahead. Yeah, certainly. It's it's a very frustrating situation, and 
Um, I mean, your high ground defense is pretty solid. You're still going to be able to kill off those Naga Siren Illusions with the Lion. He does have a Blink Dagger now, which means that he's going to be able to find that initiation point. But the Sanjin Yasha finally finished up on this Gyrocopter is going to mean that he's going to be a little bit more tanky and can fight a little bit against them. But the Tiny having the Shadow Blade, it's going to mean that he doesn't have as good of initiation. He is going to be able to get past the Radiance Burn, though, which is pretty nice. Um, he's not going to get this, his Blink canceled. Uh, and also, eventually, it's not really the best Silver Edge game in the world. You could end up going for it and taking away the Bash from the Spirit Breaker, but that's not super relevant. Um, all in all, I, I think that probably what you're going to need to see out of this lineup here is going for a bit more of just the group together, defend whenever you can. But if they group together, they're going to get caught out by the Naga Siren Illusion. It just, to me, seems like it's a... There's too many problems right now. They need too much on these heroes, and they're not going to be able to find the farm quickly enough. I think they just need the situation to fit their needs. I think that's what the what they really need. So if they if uh, Pang Nima doesn't have the ideal Naga Siren initiation, I think it'll be a better team fight for Trust because they can have the fights happen how they want it. Not when the, not not if the Naga Siren songs then all of a sudden it changes in favor of Pang Nima because they're getting the initiation or the perfect initiation as long as they don't mess up the the skill timings so yeah. i think for trust if they can catch pang nima off guard i think that might be one of their ways into coming back into the game i think another way as well as if they don't feel confident enough into fighting pang nima they can also transition back into that sort of tiny wisp rat play that we sometimes see and we know how disrupt uh, how destructive tiny and wisp can be to towers by themselves yeah, let's get another charge on out there. Not going to be able to find this one, I don't think, as Lion does have that Blink Dagger away. Oh, nice little toss there. They ended up seeing them come on in, and the very good warding vision is going to be able to be enough that they uh, they don't end up getting caught out there. But yeah, you talk about the, the split push game that you can see out of the size Signature Trust. It's definitely relevant, um, but it does still feel like, you know, the side of them don't have the best wave clear outside of their cores. If you take a look at the way that Lion ended up interacting, you can toss in out the Earth Spike. Um, Io doesn't really have any wave clear at all. And so you have the Gyrocopter and the Tiny, but you kind of need them also to be able to hit towers. I think that Gyrocopter is probably going to be the best indicator of being able to, you know, take on out those those creep waves. Um, if you end up losing a Rax early, you're going to see problems coming out. We are going to be able to see the Io still caught off onto the other side, ends up being able to connect there, and they're going to relocate away. But Io is going to go down here, I think. Um, as we do have the Naga Siren in the area, and if they need to even, they could kind of commit Song to this, but probably just going to be able to be enough to get the Ensnare off on top of that IO to catch him out. Yeah, and I like what they uh, what the Naga Siren did with the Illusion. She sent them into the jungle, mm -hmm. but it would have also spotted out somebody if they were in the jungle waiting for the IO to tether to them. So, yeah. yeah, good stuff coming out from the Naga to sort of not just scout things out, but also farm, cost efficient, very, very good time, very good... Uh, use of your time as well as your micro. So Wisp is gone, no chance of any sort of relocate here for Signature Trust. They're sort of confined to their own base now. Yeah. And it just goes to show how scared they are of Pang Lima. Definitely, it's it's a really, like they can catch them out so quickly now that you end up having the Naga Saren this farmed up. And you know, the we talked bad about the drums early on. It's really ended up working out for her. The fact that you've got these illusions that are that much more tanky. I still kind of think that you could have gone for a different item and it would have been an easier uh, set of games to be able to potentially win here. But it's ended up working out for them. We do have the Doom Sugar Bear just running on up onto high ground. Happy as a clam. He's going to have the amplified damage on top of him. But not really afraid of going down here. Shiva's Guard also on the Dark Seer. And it feels like they can't really fight into this. You talked in the draft about the Naga Siren setting up things for being able to have big teamfight ultimates. And if you're able to lay the Doom down on top of somebody, take them out of the teamfight completely, and then follow it up with the Vacuum Wall as we ended up seeing in that one definitive fight that gave them a 5,000 net worth lead. I think that you're, if you're Signature Trust, you have to be that scared. There's no really other mm. an ancient answer. Yeah. So 28 minutes in, and I'm not too sure if... I think I might be blind. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Is my game bugged? Just give me a moment. I'm just going to just double check things. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Um, it looks like Naga Siren is going to be building into that Manta style also, uh, as we do have the Naga actually running right by my pro. 
They do end up seeing him here, and they have the option to jump in if they want to. They have committed the splash now on top of the IO. He's dropping relatively low. They're going to be able to get the vacuum wall back, and that's going to be a charge on top of my prone. He's going to get chased on down here. They have complete and total vision of him, and I think that he's going to need to be able to get a little bit of help. They're not going to be able to find him in time. He's still running away very quickly. Avatos combo. Ooh. That's actually going to be enough to kill her off. That is a huge kill right now. They are going to be able to get the blink for it, and then a little bit of the craggy exterior. If they can keep him alive right now, this would be enormous but it looks like they are going to end up being able to take this fight buyback by the Naga Siren it might have been a little bit premature but it looks like they're going to try and take their advantage at this point in time Bun ready to drop forward Ion Shell on top of several different heroes meanwhile the Naga Siren is over in the mid lane is going to be starting to burn on down these heroes Gyrocopter caught out from the rest of the crowd he's going to get ensnared he's going to get charged he is going to go down a big avalanche toss combo is going to be coming out here in a second connects onto the dark or onto the uh, doom but he is still having the Aegis on top of him they ended up burning through that one are they going have enough to kill him off the second time. I don't believe so. Shallow Grave keeping eye the tiny Naga alive. They do end up committing the Song of the Siren, and I think this is the point where you have to back out. You just have not enough tank ability on this hero. The missile is going to be connecting eventually onto the Darks here, who still does have a decent amount of damage on top of him. That's going to be a kill on top of this Doom. Maybe can they burn him down? They take out the Naga Siren. Game of Throws coming in as we do see the blink away. Darks here trying to slow him down with the Shiva's Guard, and thankfully, at least for the side of Pang 5, they're going to be able to get away from that one. A nice little collection of kills, though, and committing the buyback on the Naga Siren only to die. So how many buybacks did we see on Sigda to Trust? There was one on the Tiny, there was one on the Gyrocopter, and that seems to be the only buybacks thrown out by them. But Naga Siren, that dieback, that has to sting the Naga. She bought back, she wanted to contribute, ended up dying. That's 45 seconds off the map, and this is pushing time, actually, for Sigda to Trust. And without the Naga Siren, there's no song initiation. And also, that's a lot of damage output not available to Pang Nima. So this is a small window of opportunity for them to go for this high ground push. And they've got a lot of damage with this Tiny as well. You, you look at his physical right click, it's almost 300 base, but vacuum wall. And here comes the combo crushes there to sort of slow down the initiation for Pang Nima. Then everyone on Trust, they get out with a tiny bit of damage to the tower. They would have loved to do more than that, but... Having to just keep these heroes alive, very good decision from Trust not to sort of go for any overextension. Yeah, and I think that that was really a key point right there because you end up getting caught out there. You end up losing that engagement uh, and dying with the Naga Sire now being back up also. You don't have buyback on any of your heroes. So if you end up losing right there, there's a very real possibility that Peng 5 just ends up going down uh, the mid lane and being able to take a lane of racks. So really good recognition of the fact that they didn't want to push their luck too much further. And now the game is sort of stalled back up again. We have the AC that's been completed on the Tiny. The Naga has somewhat been denied on out her Manta style. Of course, once you end up getting that item, it's going to make the split push game all that much more dangerous. And then afterwards, sort of soon to follow is I'm sure going to be an Octarine core. Uh, also worth knowing the AC has been completed on Doom. So net worth wise, you still are running this tri core from the side of Pang 5 that have significantly more farm than the Gyrocopter and the Slardar. But I'm wondering if pretty soon here, we're going to start to see those heroes catch back up and be in a solid position also. But we do have an initiation that's going to be coming out in a second. Song of the Siren can be committed for this one if they want. There's the charge forward. My Pro taking a good amount of damage. Dust has been committed at this point as well. There's going to be the defensive relocate, and Io looks to be soon to die, but I think that they're relatively okay with this. It's just a wisp at this point. They just have to make sure they keep the Tiny alive, because remember, he doesn't have buyback, so if he dies, that's going to be it. So quick death on the on the poor wisp. That's down for 40 seconds. That's not actually that long, so it's not bad. In the meantime, up top, though, trying to chase after Abba. They have 100% vision. Gonna blink out straight TP. Can they do anything to catch him out the song? It's gonna catch out Abba. Oh, this poor Slaughter. He just wants to go home. Just let him go. He's your brother. He's not really your brother. They're, he's a Slytherin. But the Naga Siren's a Slytherin. Wait, yep. so are they supposed to be the same race? I'm not sure about that. It's a Slytherin crush, but. No, I don't the know. Slaughter is a Slytherin, right? That's, his, that's supposed to be like his race. Yeah, I think and that then, might be. And then Naga's a Slytherin. How come male and female <laughs> Slytherins look so weird? I don't know. This is this is a game of... it's The lore behind all of this is ridiculous. Uh, uh, Corrupt Drop Bear lets us know, yes, they both are the same race. Um, but I, if I remember right, I think that Naga Siren was like a disgraced Slytherin. So 
Um, whatever, it's fine. Uh, they get, they both get crushed. <laughs> um, actually, it's just the slaughter that ended up getting crushed there. And looking for their second point of initiation at the, right now. Slarder has played a big role in this game, consistently being able to get counter initiations and allowing his team to get out of here. I think that now, really the biggest points that you're going to end up having is how are the Darkseer initiations going to be coming out relative to the Slardars. And Darkseer can do a lot more considering he's been able to get the farm. Uh, and also the the Tiny being able to get an illusion of him created and start hitting onto his own team. That would be pretty huge in these fights. So that's what I'm looking for is the Darkseer initiations being able to be solid. And if that ends up happening, they're going to be in a good position. Yeah, absolutely. So useless stats. Slark is also. That's like saying a cat looks is a dog. <laughs> There's nothing alike in Slark, Naga Siren, and Slaughter. I I honestly would like to see if they maybe rework or remake the the Slaughter model to be more like Naga Siren, but obviously, still Slaughter. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I would love to see something like that because let's face it, this model is crap. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Um, and Nagasarin looks kind of cool, actually. Uh, we are going to be having a little bit of an initiation here um, in a second, I think, as they're looking for their opportunity to find somebody out. I think that it's going to be around this Roshan next, is that's really what they're going to be looking for. Um, and it doesn't look like they're going to actually find it. DD Rune is up on the Doom. Nobody wanting to make a move at this point in time. As Oh, we get the Relocate oh. jump forward. They're going to be able to take a lot of damage there onto the Naga Star and dropping low, and they're going to be able to make it happen. And now maybe overextension. They're jumping in on top of him. Nice vacuum wall, but where's the follow-up damage? It's not there. Bun is dropping pretty low. He's going to be able to get the catch on to the Slardar. Doom has been committed at this point by the Gyrocopter. He's going to go down, and now my pro in the middle of everybody taking a lot of damage. Everybody is dropping low on the side of the Radiant. Can he kill them all off? Starting to hit away on top of him. Craggy exterior is still very relevant. The Doom is getting a lot of damage onto this Tiny, and it looks like he is finally going to fall in a second or two. Can Io heal him back up in time? No, not going to be able to get there. And another kill. Three dead on the side of Signature Trust, looking for their opportunity to take on out this Io, and that's going to be it. Is going to fall. Another couple quick kills, and everything looking good for Pang 5, as they might be able to take this one. They can. They can absolutely take this mid, uh, mid tower plus Raxes. There's no tiny for 70 seconds. 40 seconds on the gyro. Only here is to defend is going to be a slaughter plus a lion that's going to come in about 10 seconds. And look at the creep waves. It's in, so it's in favor of Pang Lima by a mile. They're going to take these set of Raxes. Then they just move up top and take that. So just a small delay, it seems, by Abra's. He can't really do anything else outside of going in for a blink crush. So mid is taken. Now it looks like it's going to be top. Can Pang Lima take bottom as well? I think they're going to have to try and fight up against Signature Trust, get a couple of kills, and then feel comfortable enough to go for that bottom push. They're at full HP in the enemy base. And, oh, Feymau. Feymau, not like this, buddy. Not like this. He tried to just slow it down, but it's a mistake. Here comes Tiny, though. He bought back. yet enough time. Sakri going to be kept alive just because of his shallow grave and all of a sudden my pro being chased up by five heroes this tiny bot back he needs to survive he will get a mini relocate back to base and all of a sudden lakel gets netted up pang will finish up the racks toss forward onto the wisp he's actually really really low don't want to throw back throw him in there's the song there from the naga are they gonna stay and it looks like they are Oh, they're going to oh, be able God. to find this one. Tiny is doomed on up. They end up using the Shiva's Guard, blinking away, not wanting to get caught out the Darkseer, but they're going to be able to kill on off that Slardar in a second or two. Radiance Burn is going to be enough to kill him off, and now Tiny looking to fall. Can they get him out? They do have the dust to be able to reveal him. There's going to be the Guardian Greaves keeping everybody alive, and finally Tiny is going to go triple kill for the Naga Siren, and Gyrocopter is also going to go down. The Lion bought back for that one is going to be able to burst on down Naga for 1,200, 1,300 gold, but at the end of the day it doesn't end up mattering good game well played ends up getting called and that is going to be it signature trust knocked uh -huh. out of this tournament by paying five a quick 2-0 goodness gracious the plays the the decisions coming out from Pam, pang lima have been superb today i'm very impressed with this team and it's a very new team as well so if they're performing like this against Signature Trust, I'm excited to see these guys playing up against some of the teams that have already moved on forward. Uh, thing to note before the game finished, Dazzle bought a Desolator. So uh, I think Sakura just <laughs> having fun there. 
Absolutely. And feeling good about the opportunity for them to move on. I will mention that I believe they fa face execration in the next series, uh, in the next round of this draft. And we've moved on through all of the first round. I'm actually going to switch on over real quickly to the standings. That way you guys can take a look at the brackets um, as we move on into the next stage of